Hi, I'm Kurt Buchanan, and in this video I'm going to show some of the steps required for creating the structure inventory and emergency planning zone files that you need for LifeSim 2.0. This process is going to use ArcGIS Pro version 2.3, although most of these steps can be done in ArcMap as well. So first let's look at what we need to get started. I've got a RAS model that's got all the inundations created with grids and inundation boundaries in them. I've also got the terrain grid and I've got uh, geometry that's been exported for the river to storage areas and the cross sections. So I've also got this NSI version 2 package that has all of the files from the NSI version 2 for all the states in one folder. I've got a toolbox and a counties shape file that we're going to use. So these are all available on the MMC network drive. So first I'm going to create a new ArcGIS Pro map. I typically save these in my project folder. wrong so you, you just select a folder and then you name the project this will create a new folder in your project that'll have your ArcMap documents in it it'll have your default geo databases and all the other files you need so we start out with the basic map Now I'm going to go to the catalog pane down here and the toolboxes. I'm going to right click and go to add toolbox and now we're going to add our NSI to creator toolbox. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and run our NSI version 2 creator model. So to run the NSI tool we need a study area and so what we're going to do is use our maximum inundation for that. But the tool, the tool has the ability to buffer and simplify that inundation polygon so that it can make a good study area that's not too complex to be used easily in ArcMap or in LifeSim. So now if, you're, if your inundation polygon is very uh, complicated to begin with, then you might run out of memory doing this process and so you may have to do something else to get a study area whether it's you know turning your terrain grid into a polygon uh, or just drawing a polygon either an arc map or an arc pro uh, that it will encompass everything you need it to so what this tool does is it takes your study area it has the option to buffer and simplify it and you can set the buffer distance and it's going to pull in all the count the it's going to take a county shape file clip that to your study area and it's going to look at that county shape file for each county's FIPS code and it's going to copy all the NSI version 2 files into a new folder it's going to clip those to your study area and then append them all into one now it also has the capability of indexing all the prices so you could change this to 1.029 if you wanted the index from 2018 to 2019 and it also has the ability to modify this so it's easier to use an FIA because FIA requires a structure name field and the res3 occupancy types for FIA have the I at the end of them so this will change it up make it easier to use for you at F. So I'm going to set this up first by going to my project folder and go in the RAS file and I'm going to go to my max high fail inundation boundary next is the US County shapefile, which is going to be in the NSI 
creator package. Next is the folder that has all the NSI2 files. For output folder, we're going to go back into our project folder and we'll create a new folder called NSI. Now the last bit of information we need is this random file for a template and that's going to be any NSI file. Typically what I do is just use either the first one in the combined NSI2 files or I've already copied that first one out uh, to make it easier to grab. But that's how it's going to get all the field names and set up a template file to append all of your structures into. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck the modify result for FIA use because I don't need that. And we click on run. And we can see all the inputs that we used for this. And we can read the messages down here to see how it's going to go. Now this process is going to take a little while because I'm doing the buffer. And you can see down at the bottom it continues to, to track. Okay, we've come back and our model's finished running. Notice you will get uh, some warnings and that happens because uh, when the checkbox, depending on which checkboxes are on or off, there's always going to be parts that actually don't execute, which is fine. All right, so now we're going to go and we're going to add that file. So in our NSI now, we've got our NSI inventory that we'll add. We've also got, in the polygons folder, we've got our study area that we're going to add. So next, we're going to look at creating damage reaches from our study area polygon. So we've got it loaded in. First thing we're going to do is make a copy of it. So we'll just hit data, export features, and we'll find a place to store this. We're going to call this damage reaches. Right. So the basic idea here is we're going to use the split polygons tool in the editing bar uh, to be able to split this up into our downstream reaches. So the key thing we need to know is where to split the polygons. So if your model has cross sections this is an easy way to add in cross sections. We can go to the labeling tab and we can label those cross sections by the river station. So this will allow you to see your mileage. So in this one if you know that the dam is at six and a half miles you can just subtract three so at about three and a half miles it's going to be your three mile point. So to split this one, click on edit. We'll select the polygon. We'll go into our tools until we get to split. And we'll just kind of start right here and kind of try and make it very close to the cross section. Double click to close. That splits it. So the same thing now we'll go to our right about at our three and a half mile point which is going to be between these two cross sections come across and double click so there's a couple other ways you can find these points you can just measure downstream uh, if the dam's been modeled before you can download an older FIA or life sim model uh, from project wise and see if you can pull the study area out uh, that's already broken into reaches or the county file that was broken into reaches uh, so you could use that if your model is 2d you won't have cross sections you may just have to measure it so once we have our polygon split out into all, all of our reaches the next thing we need to do is open the attribute table 
And we're going to have to add a name field. So first we have to save the edits where we split it. Then we'll be able to hit add field. Down at the bottom, type in name. Double click on the data type. And if down at the bottom of this drop down is text. We scroll over, we can change the length of this field to make it a lot shorter. Then what we have to do is hit save up in the top to be able to save our new name field. Come over here. We can go to select the in pool and now we can name it. We can select the 0 to 3 and we know it's 0 to 3. I always like to keep letters in here if you just put 0-3 when you get to 3-7 Excel might think that that is March 7th uh, so it's better to just keep letters in the names okay so again to save the edits go up to the top click save uh, and I'm gonna skip doing the 3 to 7 the 715 and and the 60 mile marker uh, so we can move on to the next step so so our final step is going to be to create emergency planning zone polygons, uh, which is going to have our double warning. That's how we set parameters for warning and mobilization curves and for warning times. But first, we need to select our in-pool area and export it out into its own file, because we'll use that in the next step. Now you can see I had already made this earlier. I'm making it again. I'll hit save and run. Okay, so now we go back to our toolbox and our NSI creator, and we have this polygons to double warning. Now, this tool is going to use our study area. which is in our NSI polygon folder. Next it's going to use that in pool area that we just pulled out. And then we're going to put two our max high non-fail and our interim high non-fail shape files in here. Go to the max high non-fail first. Interim high non-fail. Now if you don't have polygons for these uh, you, one way you can do it is load the HDF files into LifeSim, create a, a max depth grid, and then there's a tool in the same toolbox that can convert that into a shape file. So now I'm going to put, make a new folder and call it EPZs. And that's where these will go. So I've got the names in there, but you can change them if you need to. So basically it's going to union our study area with the non-fail areas and then it's going to also union in that in pool area to give you one solid EPZ. Okay, so now that tool is run, we'll go and check the results. We've got two files in here. Okay, and to change symbology, once you have a layer se selected, you go to the Appearance tab, and you can change this to different values. And then down here, you just have to click Add Unlisted Values to select them all. Hit OK. So now you can see we've got our impulse zone. We've got this orange area that's our no-fail zone. Then we've got the purple that's our fail out here. You can see those listed right there. Now if you need more than just those two, you can rerun this again. You do have to have two different 
files in there so you may have to create one uh, a second time even though even if you don't need it uh, but you can do that okay so the last thing that we need to run our life sim model is we want to also aggregate results to the cities so I have a, a cities file for the entire US I'm going to open that in here and we can see I've got a couple cities up here but all we're going to do is just go back to the map tool and we're going to do the select by location select those populated place areas that intersect our study area we'll hit run and we right click on it go to data export features and this will be our city area now if you've got a bunch of small ones you want to might want to compare the result to your actual inundation uh, see if some of them may not even get wet you may want to go ahead and delete those out All right. so now we've got our city polygons we've got our EPZs we've got our damage reaches and our study area and that that's the main pieces we need to go ahead and run our life set model thank you guys for listening good luck on your models